and it is a model uh, M4515 kg and um, I want to start using this again but the problem is I mean it works perfectly uh, however I think it needs some restoring the only problem is is that it doesn't allow it you can press play, you can stop, but it does not eject. So I think there's a part of the mechanism of the door, you know, uh, which is, I don't know what's happened, probably jammed or something like this. Um, this It's just like it's not even, you know, contacting the latch which is supposed to release the door that should spring out. And yeah, that's the, that's the issue I'm going to have to fix because it's kind of annoying. I mean, like I said, it's stuck in there now. <laughs> But other than that issue, it's actually a pretty nice, um, you know, cassette recorder. It's got volume and balance here, treble and bass controls. It's even got a mono and stereo mode, <laughs> which is kind of cool. It's unusual, but cool. And it's even got a stereo wide, you know, which is, again, kind of unusual, but cool. And uh, it's got chrome tape as well, support. Um, it is shortwave. And it's short wave two, short wave one, which you know I'm impressed about. Medium wave two, and loudness control. You know it's it's really nice. It's actually quite, and it's built sturdy. You know, so I'm gonna start using this. It's too cool not to use. It's got such a nice '70s look about it. You know, how can you not use this beauty? <laughs> okay, first things first. I'm gonna open this thing out. First, play it without the lead in, so that it drains it. There you go. So don't get any nasty surprises when I go inside it. Because I need to take these dials out. Just be careful with this not to break it. There seems to be some uh, Commodore 64C style shielding going on here, <laughs> which will definitely need to be back in place because this is a radio and I didn't even ever want to have to deal with this. It's just a mess of tangled wires. Now people may ask me, um, Maddie, do you enjoy repairing stuff? And my answer would be, well, I like it when it's almost repaired. I wouldn't say I actually enjoy repairing. <laughs> I just want stuff to work. That's basically it. Okay, I'm gonna have to unscrew this. Oh man, more screws to unscrew. <clears throat> I mean, everything else is working perfectly. I don't wanna mess around with anything which I don't need to mess around with. I'm getting somewhere at least. I thought, at first I thought, no, I cannot do this. I'm not gonna be able to do this. Blah blah ding ding blah. But let's just do my usual positive thinking thing. I guess after all this freaking wrestling, <clears throat> uh, there was a clip at the top. This bit clips on, and I had no idea. And that releases two screws. Uh, that um, exposes two screws here, which would release the board. <laughs> my. some point maybe it'd be better. Okay, where is the eject? Okay, I've decided to move things along onto you know the uh, the table here because I need to sit and do things properly rather than sitting awkwardly. Uh, this is just you know the the switches and dials which I've taken off you know the top part of it. When I'm trying to open this thing. Opening this thing is like a task in itself. I managed to find a downloadable service manual for this for this. However to download it, I have to pay 48 euros. I am not paying 48 euros for this, for the, just the service manual. Somebody out there is making serious money out of, you know, exploiting people's desperation. I know this is rare, but come on. Okay, since I do not have a service manual for this, I've had to kind of like figure this out myself. 
once I have fixed the, the eject mechanism, positive thinking there, <laughs> once I have fixed the eject mechanism, uh, because it's gonna freaking happen, um, I have... Uh, I want to recap this thing. So, in, uh, you know, the service manual would have had it listed, but instead I've had to go with a pen light and a magnifying glass. I've gone through every single one of these uh, capacitors one by one, and I have, um, you know, written down the value and voltage of it. So, yeah, it took me a while to do that. So I've basically written down the values that exist, and I've made a tally chart on uh, which capacitors I will need. And of course, um, it turns out that I'm gonna have to replace 70 capacitors. You know, <laughs> this is gonna be fun, isn't it? <laughs> now, I ordered the capacitors already, and they are low ESR uh, capacitors. And I've ordered, I've ordered, or, uh, <laughs> I've ordered um, a pack of random sized um, tape machine. And I've also bought a pack of random sized uh, cassette tape mechanism belts because I don't know the exact size of these. So I'm sure this will have, you know, one that fits. Well, there's three that I need to replace. So three, I'm sure, will be in that. So I'm gonna do the capacitors another time. But uh, what I wanna do today is the eject mechanism. Uh, I'm gonna do the check mechanism first uh, before I do any capacitors or anything like this. So I'm gonna need here my screw dish or my vessel, <laughs> which I use as a screw dish. Do excuse my voice today. I I'm not well actually. I do have you know I've come down with some sort of bug or whatever it is. Actually, most probably it's the lack of sleep because I've been surviving on fragments of sleep every now and then. Just not good. It's a nice, gorgeous, sunny afternoon, so I just thought, why not make the most of the lighting? Okay, so <clears throat> the four screws that are holding the front have been undone. <gasps> are you freaking kidding? It just ejected. Why did you eject now all of a sudden? Why are you working now? Huh? Is the things even going down now? Why? You kidding me? What was stopping it? Okay, either way I'm opening this out and I'm seeing what the heck is that because I don't want to screw it all back together and it's all, you know... Right, I'm gonna get this out. How do I get the front out? There doesn't seem to be any way. And those four screws don't seem to have any leeway of what's... No, it's a nice bassy sound. Okay, good. Okay, so we have Senor Sanyo opened out here. Now, what was the thing, what was the issue? Which I completely do not understand why or how this happened. Because it's completely solid. Is that this eject, this part. Because this part was not going down when I was pressing that eject button. It was staying up. So I don't know what, what was causing that. Because it's completely solid. I mean, I can take it down without, but it was completely solid. Maybe it's like it was doing that, and all of a sudden, it, you know, it became like this, and it was just kept going like that, and not pushing this down. And maybe me opening it kind of, you know, somehow aligned it again. But I want, I don't want this to happen again. I would have loved to be able to put a light, a backlight on this, or, you know, light from the insides shining. On, in these. Maybe I can put a light in between them, you know, to kind of make them so you can see them. It looks gorgeous in the sunlight, doesn't it? <laughs> looks like it's got a real character. Okay, this is a little bit of a where do I begin sort of thing going on because, you know, it's fixed that. Well, I haven't fixed that. It fixed it freaking so often now. 
um, <laughs> I left them confused. First things first, I'll remove this cake done gunk, which has been probably been on it since 1970. Even chlorhexidine on it. <laughs> I shouldn't use chlorhexidine for this, but <laughs> you know, that's like antimicrobial uh, disinfectant kind of thing. Uh, it's actually supposed to be used for skin. But I'm doing it on Senor Sanyo's skin because he's freaking filthy. <laughs> okay, there's three belts here. One on the top of the spindle, one on the bottom here, where the mortar is there. And um, one on the counter here, which is extremely loose. So, <clears throat> I wanna replace all three, of course. But I don't know how to get to this one. I guess it's good that I'm doing this because anyone else who has a Sanyo M45 15kg, you know, I'm sure I'm not the, it's not so rare that I'm the only freaking one, that this one is the only one that exists on earth. I don't believe that for a second. So if anyone has a rare one like this, <clears throat> you know, there is support here. <laughs> well, some form of support, I guess. We can, it's like figuring it out together, I suppose have been a little mischievous and bent this up very slightly so that I can, you know, get this uh, and I've taken the belt out this way uh, because there is like a gap underneath this I mean it's gonna be, it's not gonna be easy to put back in but when you cannot, when you just cannot, that, that screw there which is how you would take this out and remove this is literally glued shut with the strongest glue stupid gap under there is so small that okay. okay so we have two sizes here okay so the biggest belt in this is gonna have to be the one no this is the one I'm gonna have to try then you know so let's put that in here because I managed to get it uh, underneath there. Basically what it is, as you can see on that motor, it's got a very spiked up, you know, part sticking up. And that is almost touching this, well it's not almost touching this metal, it's just keep leaving like one millimeter gap or something. And it's hard to get the rubber through it, so I'm just like lifting this up and then poking it through. And I managed to, managed to uh, succeed. Okay, so that belt is perfect. Great about that. So that's one replaced. Now for the other, I need to find and I'm sure that I will not struggle in finding that. So let me just kind of again pinch this through from the underneath and then once we've done that I'm just gonna semi put this together and test it. Brilliant. Antenna. Make sure there are no twists. Twisty twists. Now just the counter belt here, which is extremely loose. Let's kind of find the right size. Perfect. It's a little tighter too, just a touch. And I, yeah, managed to find the right sizes in this uh, kit. Okay, so counter belt is done. You know, the motor, those two belts are done. And this is bent down as best as I can, back into place. Now to put this thing together, I just like semi put it together and test it. Make sure everything is working before, you know, I continue with anything else. So it's just like clean this out. <laughs> Freaking chlorhexidine. Get rid of all the microbes. Freaking antimicrobial. So I've had to take the front panel apart again because, okay, yeah, the eject worked, but when I pressed the play, and after I pressed stop, the eject did not work. Now, if you notice this part here, this this metal bit here, when you press the eject, I press down on the eject, it goes down, and this latch unhooks the door, which then springs out. Now, when you press play here it gets pushed out but when you press stop it takes its time to go back in sometimes it doesn't go back in so when you're pressing eject it doesn't do anything 
Now, can you see it's it's going back, but very slowly. You know, sometimes it doesn't. It seems that the spring has, you know, either lost its strength or whatever it's there, or it needs uh, some greasing or lubrication or something like this. Now, if I were to kind of like, you know, press it inwards like that, then yes, the eject works. But again, when I press play, it gets pushed out. Now there, there was another issue with the with the um, mechanism. You see this here. This is the record tab. Now, when the cassette has, uh, so when the cassette is in write protect mode, um, you have you know that that hole. So there's nothing pushing down on this, so you cannot press record. But when the tab is on write enable mode, you know it pushes down on this, so it allows the record button to be pressed. But sometimes, even with record enabled, you still could not push the record button down for some stupid reason. I have no idea why. It just needs some greasing. Okay, I put two drops of machine oil under this thing. Under that. And if you look at it now, you saw how it went back slowly, right? Before. <coughs> you notice now? It goes instantly back. Press play, press stop, go straight away up, and then you can eject. That was the issue, it was stuck there, it was like jammed, it was, you know, it needed some greasing. Now it's instant. I'm happy about this now, I feel more secure about this, that this is gonna work. I was worried that it might be some spring or something like this, I'm gonna have to take this mechanism out of it, but thank god I don't have to do any of that. <laughs> yeah, that's just two drops of that machine oil did the trick. As you can see, it just instantly goes back in. I am happy now. I can eject the cassettes. So now it's the recap recapping this thing next week, and after that, it should be all done and brilliant. And of course, you know, there will be more uh, once I find some good drivers. But the only problem is um, actually measuring how big these are. I mean, when you buy it, you don't know if it's measured from the outside or if the diameter or if it's screw to screw because they're all different measurements so i'm not sure exactly what it is uh, sorry which uh what i'm measuring when i'm asked when i'm um you know looking for new speakers so it's that is a dilemma i don't want to order some good speakers and they turn out to be completely wrong size or the wrong you know so they're not going to obviously fit beyond this Anyway, that is just an extra. I will worry about that, you know, at, at when the time comes. For now, this is fixed and I am one happy girl. So, that pause mechanism is quite funky. Kind of goes woo. <laughs> anyway, you know, that's all there is for this time. Next time will be the recapping. So for now, I say thank you so much for watching and adios.